So then, chances are, if you are watching this video, that means that you are interested in starting the fun, creative side hustle of creating your own t-shirt business. And fair enough, did you know that the online indie t-shirt market is rapidly growing? In just five years, the indie t-shirt market is set to increase by over 50%. Yep, instead of wearing generic branded t-shirts such as Nike t-shirts, increasingly younger consumers are preferring to wear t-shirts that are personalized to their interests, passions, and hobbies. So for example, let's say that Zach was into hiking. Well, instead of buying a generic Nike t-shirt, chances are Zach would much rather instead wear this cool t-shirt featuring a map of different national parks throughout the USA that he enjoys hiking in as it's more personalized to his interests. And so here is the interesting business opportunity for me and for you. See, you might be sitting at home or on a bus somewhere behind a screen thinking to yourself, well, gee, Sarah, that's all good and all, but won't big brands like Nike just create their own cool hiking t-shirts? Well, I'm sure they'd like to, but frankly, they can't. There are billions of people in the world. And surprise, surprise, the amount of different interests, passions, and hobbies that billions of people have is, well, staggering. And if you don't believe me, check out the Wikipedia page just for hobbies. Big brands like Nike simply can't make t-shirts to cover over 7 billion humans worth of interests, passions, and hobbies. Which is where the indie t-shirt creators such as myself are coming in. We're driving this growth and carving out a new type of clothing niche. Where instead of creating a brand, you serve the customer by making t-shirts featuring cool art and phrases that they identify with. And so in this video, that's what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you how to open step-by-step step your own online niche t-shirt business. But you see, that's not all, because as part of this video, I have also set myself an additional challenge. I'm going to show you how to do all of this for free. That's right, for free. The only thing you will need is either a credit card or a debit card with $50 to $100 on it, although as you'll see, we won't be using that really to pay for any expenses. Which means then that while my longtime subscribers will know, I run my t-shirt business through Shopify, which I do think is a great option if you have a startup budget. Shopify is not free. <laughs> Shopify starts at $29 a month. And so since this tutorial is all about starting your own online niche t-shirt business for free, Shopify is not going to work well for us. But that is okay. Because as I've discussed in this video here on my channel, these days you've got lots of options for setting up an online store, including free options. One website is a site here that my subscribers will recognize called Teespring, otherwise now known as Spring. And thousands of people have used Spring or Teespring to open online t-shirt stores like this for free. And it's pretty popular. Each month it gets around 15 to 20 million visitors a month, so that's pretty cool. And this is a website that I'm sure my subscribers will also recognize called Redbubble. Thousands of people have also used Redbubble to open online t-shirt stores like this for free. And Redbubble is actually even more popular. Each month it gets around 25 to 40 million visitors. So that is pretty good and definitely better than spring anyway. But did you know that there is another website out there that gets 10 times the amount of traffic that Redbubble does that people are opening online t-shirt stores on for free? And that website is Etsy. If you haven't heard about Etsy before, it's an online marketplace that lets you list and sell handmade items or items that you yourself design for sale. And so even though, as you'll see as part of my tutorial, you won't actually be hand making the t-shirts yourself, but instead working with a production partner, t-shirt businesses like ours are still allowed because we are designing the picture or slogan on the t-shirt ourselves. And this means we can still sell on Etsy and take advantage of the enormous amount of traffic and visitors that come here. Each month, Etsy gets around 350 to 500 million visitors. And you know what? Sales and visitors to Etsy are only growing. Etsy stores, including Etsy t-shirt stores, just keep making more and more money. Which is why Etsy's share price is extremely high and over $200. It's because Etsy stores are doing really well and killing it. And I can see it in my viewers' stores. The successful subscribers that open a store on Redbubble tend to earn hundreds of dollars a month. Whereas on Etsy, they could earn thousands. It's not rocket science. It's just that, well, there are far more customers and thus more money to be made on Etsy. There is, however, just one problem with that. Usually, Etsy, yeah, just like with Shopify, it's not free to sell on it. Nope, Etsy usually charges 20 cents to list an item for four months. So what gives, Sarah? I thought this was a free tutorial. And 20 cents, that ain't free, yo. Well, don't worry, my friends, because I've got you. If you come to Etsy and do a search for 40 free Etsy listings, you'll see people have created dummy Etsy product listings that 
if you open, will contain a clickable URL in the product description. This is their Etsy referral affiliate link. As a special offer, Etsy gives all of their store owners a referral affiliate link. That's if you click, will give you 40 free item listings as a way to entice you to register and create a store. And as a thank you, that Etsy store will also get 40 free item listings if you register for a free store through their referral affiliate link. So it is a win-win for both of you. So you can just do a search for this on Etsy and click on any of the referral links to get 40 free item listings. <laughs> no 20 cent fee required. And setting up an Etsy account is super simple. However, as part of the registration process, you are required to add an item to your store. And so this means that before we can open a store on here, we're gonna need items, i.e. t-shirts, to list and sell, which is why, to keep things nice and simple, we're gonna set up a store on Etsy after we have designed and created our t-shirts. So let's begin this tutorial at step one, create a t-shirt design. Now you see, here's the deal. I bet a bunch of you are sitting at home thinking, well, gee, Sarah, I'd love to start my own t-shirt business, but I'm not an artist. Surely I have to at least hire an artist to be able to create t-shirt designs, right? Well, my friends, the answer is nope, nope. You do not need to hire an artist at all. Because you see, here's the deal. This simple word-based t-shirt, it's made roughly $40,000. And the reason why I say that is because of the reviews. To work out roughly how many sales an item has made on Etsy, I take the reviews an item has, which for this is 224, and then divide that by the store's total number of reviews, which is 4,028. So that came to roughly 5.5%. Well, we can guess that most likely then, if it makes up 5.5% of the reviews, it's probably also made up around 5.5% of the store's total sales. And since we can see that the store has made 30,117 sales, 5.5% of that is 1,656 sales. So if we then times that by the product price, we get over $40,000, all from this one simple two word design. And so no, you do not need to be an artist to start a successful t-shirt business on Etsy. Trendy phrases combined with trendy fonts work awesome too. And anyone can create those sorts of designs using this app here, Canva. Now, Canva has two versions. They have the free version and a paid pro version. Unfortunately, we will need to use the paid version because it has two exclusive features that we will need when designing and creating our t-shirts. However, you can still do this for free because Canva has a huge 30-day free pro trial. So go ahead and sign up for the free pro trial and then we can get started creating our first design. So we're gonna make our Canva design canvas to be the full size of the printing area for our t-shirts, which is 4,500 pixels by 5,100 pixels. So we know exactly how much space we will have to work with. And remember, you don't have to fill up all of the space and use all of it. It's just nice to know how much space you do have to work with. And you can change the background color of your canvas if you're gonna be working with white text like we are. Don't worry, as you'll see, we will remove this background color later I'm just changing it to black now so that I can easily read my white text. And with that, we can get started designing. If you like to use pictures or icons in your t-shirts, Canva has a bunch of pre-installed pictures. Something to keep in mind is that artists who have drawn pictures that have been pre-installed all have the ability to add what is called an image license to their pictures, which tells you what you can and can't do with the image. Luckily, Canva does make it super simple to check the image license for each picture that you want to use. Just hover your mouse over the image and click the little three dots and then click the little information box and the image license will pop up. And so, as you can see, we're allowed to use this image for merchandise such as t-shirts that we make and sell, which is great. We can't, however, upload the image by itself and sell it as a digital download, so that's also good to know. So that means then that we can use it on our t-shirt that we're creating and selling. So I'll just use it as an example. Something else I'll also do when designing a quick t-shirt for this tutorial video is show you how simple it would have been to find a trendy font similar to the one that was used earlier in that ooh people text-based t-shirt that we calculated to have made around $40,000 on Etsy. As you can see, Canva has tons of fonts installed. So the best thing to do is to search through different font categories. So to find a similar font, I'm searching through the handwritten font styles. And also something to keep in mind too, is that when you do find a font you like, just like with pictures, artists design and create these as well. And so just like with images, fonts will also come with their own image licenses where the artist will tell you what you can and can't do with it. Now, unfortunately, Canva doesn't have a way for you to easily find these, but luckily with Google, it's actually really easy. So let's say that you'd found this font here, uh, Amatic SC, and you wanted to find out what the font license was for it so that you could check to see if you could use it on commercial products that you sell. 
Well, checking is super easy. You just head on over to Google and type in your font name, followed by the phrase font license. And in the results, you should be able to find a page that features your font along with a license for it. And so for this font here, Matic SC, we can see that yes, this is a font that Google has created and with their license they've given it, we're allowed to use it for commercial purposes, such as making and selling merchandise with it, like t-shirts, which is great. And so once you've selected the images and fonts that you want to use in your design, you then just drag and drop them around the canvas. You can change the colors, letter spacing, all sorts of things using Canvas and built tools. And if you're stuck for ideas on what t-shirts to create, something I often recommend is that you create a design around something that you yourself enjoy. So for example, I myself love traveling. It's a big hobby of mine. I'm a massive transport geek actually. Like I know all the different commercial aviation plane models. And so it'd be pretty easy for me to make a t-shirt design around the hobby of traveling because I can use my wants and desires to help me inspire a t-shirt that I myself would buy. Whereas while I do hike whenever I'm made to by my friends and I do enjoy it in the moment, the reality is is that I'm not much of a hiker at all despite living in one of the best countries in the world for it, New Zealand. And so it would have been much harder for me to come up with a cool t-shirt for hikers like that t-shirt from the start of the video because I wouldn't have been able to use my own wants and desires to help inspire me to come up with a t-shirt design that I would have bought and worn myself. And so these days, I pretty much just stick to making and selling t-shirts around things that I myself are interested in because it's much easier to become inspired to make an awesome design that way. And so that's why I'm also really baffled when people seem surprised that so many print on demand stores can successfully coexist together. I met some people that say, but why would you ever teach others how to create and sell t-shirts? Aren't you just creating competition for yourself? And it's just such a strange thing to say because did you not see earlier at the start of the video just how many different hobbies there are in the world? How many different types of pets there are? Like just take dogs for example. Think about how many different types of dog breeds there are to make t-shirts around. There are billions of humans in the world and we all have our own interests, passions and hobbies. I'm not an expert in all of these things and I doubt that you are an expert in all of them as well. To be able to meet the human consumer demand for clothing personalized around people's niche interests, hobbies, passions, we honestly need a staggering amount of stores and clothing lines to exist. We aren't all interested in the same things, y'all. But you know, anyway, back to the tutorial video. So now that we've got a simple trendy design to upload, it is time to save it. And to do this, we need to utilize some of the features that are only included, sadly, in the Pro Canva account. When saving the file, there are two important things that we need to do. One, we will need to increase the image size by three. This is a pro account only feature. This will increase the image resolution so that when our design is printed onto a t-shirt, it will come out crisp and sharp so that our customers will love it. The second thing we'll want to do is make the background transparent. This is also a pro account only feature, although there are free tools online that will do this for you. But no matter what though, we need to use Canva's size increase tool in the pro account, so we might as well make use of their background transparent feature too. By making our background transparent, it will remove that black background and make it empty so that it won't print onto a t-shirt. Now, if we didn't make the background transparent, the design would come out looking like this when it's printed onto a t-shirt. So it is crucial that you make sure that you tick that transparent box, even if you're using a white background, get rid of it. Now, because we increased the image size by three, it will take Canva a while to process the image and save it. That's fine though, just be patient and don't click away. And once it's saved, that's it. You're ready to start selling it on t-shirts. Which means that it's time to also move on to step two, create your t-shirts to sell. And to do that, we're gonna use this website and app here, Printify. This is what we in the industry call a print on demand app. As my subscribers know, I use two print on demand apps. I use Printify and I use this one here called Printful. This one, Printful, is more expensive though. And so while I think Printful is great for established t-shirt brands like mine, since they have some cool additional features that established clothing stores will appreciate, I think if you're just starting out that most people will prefer Printify as it's much cheaper. And as you'll see, it's still a great place to source high quality t-shirts. So if you haven't seen Printify before, the way it works, is you can choose from over 200 plus blank products in their merchandise catalog, such as a t-shirt and upload your design onto it. Printify will then store a digital copy of your t-shirt and its servers. You can then list this t-shirt for sale in your online store, such as the store that we're gonna set up with Etsy and Printify will track the sales. And so then every time someone comes and buys, say, this t-shirt from you in your store, Printify will see that a customer ordered the t-shirt from you and go, yep, let's make that t-shirt. Their merchandise factory will then print your design onto a blank t-shirt 
and then package the t-shirt up and ship it out to the customer. So you can see why this is called print on demand because products get printed onto products as customers demand, i.e. order them. Printify's app will then notify the customer that the t-shirt has been shipped and send them a tracking code. So as you can see, Printify essentially lets you sell t-shirts on autopilot. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to learn even more about setting up your own print on demand business, you should be sure to download my free ebook, The Six Steps That Six Figure Online Stores Follow to Make Over $10,000 a Month. And you'll find a link to download my free ebook in the video description below. But anyway, back to the video. To get started, just go ahead and create a free Printify account for your store. Starting up is super simple, you just fill out the boxes. Printify has two versions. They have the free account and the $29 a month premium account. Now, I personally use the premium account because it saves me $1.20 for each of my t-shirts with their premium product discounts. So obviously, as your t-shirt brand grows, like me, you'll eventually want to switch to the premium account once the $1.20 discount per t-shirt saves you more than $29 a month. At that point, it's literally a no-brainer. But when you're first just starting out, it's best just to stick to the free version. But yes, as you can see, Printify has lots of different t-shirts that you can make and sell. I highly recommend when starting out to first upload unisex t-shirts so that it makes it easier to market to lots of different people. Now, out of these unisex t-shirts, there is one that my subscribers know that I absolutely love, and that is the Bala Canvas 3001. This is probably the most popular base t-shirt for print-on-demand stores. And that's for several reasons. One reason is that Bala Canvas do most of the t-shirt production process in the USA from their Los Angeles warehouse rather than a shady offshore factory. Outside of assembly, the majority of the t-shirt creation process is made and done within the USA, supporting local jobs. And a second reason is that it's super comfy to wear, which means then that customers will love it and be more likely to come back and buy another one. And the third reason is that it is a classic retail fit. Which means then that if a customer would usually say buy a medium t-shirt from a large chain like Kmart, then a medium in this will probably fit them great as well. Here is the thing you have to understand about Printify though. Printify are themselves just an app. They are not a merchandise factory, unlike Printful, which is both. Printify do not produce any of these products themselves. And instead, they let third-party print-on-demand factories connect to their app, and you can choose from these factories and pick your favorite one to make and ship your t-shirts to your customers. Because Etsy is mostly customers based in the USA, I strongly recommend selecting a USA-based factory to make and ship your products. And out of those, the one I recommend the most is Monster Digital. They're one of the most expensive, but their t-shirt print quality is fantastic. Monster Digital are a printing factory based out of Miami, Florida. And again, because this tends to confuse people, they themselves are not Printify. They're an entirely separate business. Printify is just a revolutionary app that was created to make it super easy to connect with external print-on-demand companies like Monster Digital and order t-shirts be made and shipped with them. So remember, when we use Printify to order t-shirts with Monster Digital, it is not Printify making and shipping them. It is this business here, Monster Digital. So once you've selected them, go into the t-shirt settings and choose which of the color t-shirts that you'd like. As you can see, Monster Digital has lots of colors. In general though, I do not recommend overwhelming a customer with lots of choices. I recommend choosing two to five of your favorite colors. When choosing colors, I strongly recommend prioritizing dark colors if your design will look good on them, as dark colors tend to sell the best. So I'm gonna choose here the navy, dark here the gray, asphalt, dark gray, and black. And after that, just upload your design. Earlier when we created our design with Canva, we used the pro feature to increase the image size by three. Because we did this, it now means that when we upload our image to Printify, it's gonna tell us that it's in high resolution, which means that when it's printed onto a t-shirt, that a design is gonna print boldly and sharply. If we hadn't increased the image size by three and we'd kept it at one type size, then Printify would have told us that our image resolution was low, and if we tried to print it, it would have come out blurry and ugly. And once it's uploaded, you can then resize the image and move it around until it's in the spot that you'd like it to be printed onto on the t-shirt. And then once you've got it looking the way that you want it to look, just go ahead and save your product. Printify will now store a digital copy of the t-shirt that you've created inside of its database. And so now that we've uploaded our t-shirt and designed it and saved it to our Printify account, we just need to go in and edit the product details for it. We're now gonna go in and give our products a title, description, and price. Later on in the video, I'll be going over some best practices for choosing a product title, so be sure to keep listening. Choosing great titles that are keyword rich can help you get a lot of traffic and sales on Etsy. And there's something else I need to discuss as well, which is pricing your t-shirts. So when you're choosing your t-shirt price, t-shirts on Etsy tend to sell between $20 to $30, with $22 to $25 being the most common prices, so 
I'm just gonna go ahead and list this t-shirt for sale for $22.95. That is a pretty standard price on Etsy. And when pricing your items, make sure to not use a round number. So don't price it at say $23. Be sure to price it at something like $22.95 or $22.99. And also something else that you'll notice when adding in prices is that Printify will warn you that 2XL and 3XL t-shirts will cost you more when customers order them. That's because larger t-shirts require more fabric to make and so they have higher production costs. Despite this though, I strongly recommend that you keep all of your t-shirts priced the same price. Understandably, most people would probably be offended if you charge more for a 2XL compared to a small t-shirt. And so in the t-shirt industry, we charge the same price no matter what size the customer orders. We just accept that we'll have a slightly lower profit margin for 2XL and 3XL orders. And really, the vast majority of your orders will be small to XL t-shirts anyway. So usually you'll be making the full profit margin regardless. <laughs> but yes, once you've finished editing your product details inside of Printify, it's time to move on to the next step, creating an online store for free with Etsy. So go ahead and do a search on Etsy for 40 free item listings. You'll find tons of people have set up filler products that contain a sign up link in the item description with their affiliate URL that you can just click for free and use to get 40 free item listings. <laughs> you don't need to buy anything. So go ahead and just choose one from the list and select it to open a store with that. You'll then be asked to enter the email address that you want to set up a store with, with your name and to create a password once you've done that, you'll then need to select a store name. Now, honestly, on Etsy, your store name doesn't matter. I've seen some terrible store names do really well. Just like with YouTube, some terrible YouTube channel names have done super well too. But if you have a brand name for your t-shirt store in mind, you might as well use it here as long as it's available and then you can move on to the next step. Now on this page, you're gonna be asked to create at least one product listing. Sadly, this is not optional. I'm honestly not quite sure why Etsy requires that we do this and I wish we could skip past it, but we can't. So for now, just pick one of the t-shirts that you created with Brentify and create a listing for it, filling out all of the required boxes and nothing else. Now I say only do the bare minimum that you need to create an item listing because hilariously, we're actually just gonna be deleting this. Brentify has a direct integration with Etsy Using the integration, we'll be able to not only list our Printify items on Etsy with practically the push of a button, but if we add in our t-shirts and using the integration, Printify will be able to track and manage our sales and orders too. So I suggest that you put in as little as possible here into the sections that have asterisks beside them uh, because you need to fill out those parts to complete your listing, but everything else is entirely optional. And so since we're just gonna be deleting this item listing anyway, you might as well just skip over those parts. But yes, once you've gone in and added in a filler item listing, we can move on to the next part, which is setting up how Etsy will pay you money. For that, they need to know if you have a company or not and what your home address is. Only Etsy will know this, it won't be released publicly. If you don't have a company, don't worry. You don't need to register a business to sell on Etsy. You can just select that you're a sole proprietor. For most places around the world, you don't need to sign any papers or register anything to be a sole proprietor. And after you've entered in your home address, Etsy will then request information on your bank account, such as your bank account number. This is because each time a customer buys an item from you on Etsy, it's not technically you that's collecting that money. It's Etsy or PayPal if they choose to use PayPal instead of Etsy payments. But for most customers, they tend to choose Etsy payments. And so every time a customer pays for an item of yours through Etsy payments, they will securely collect that money, remove their processing fees, and then pay out the rest to you directly to your bank account. So I went ahead and filled that out. Etsy then asked me for some identification, like a photo of my driver's license. I'm not sure if everyone gets asked to upload this or if this is because I live in New Zealand, but if they ask it for everybody, I'm not surprised. All payment processes such as Stripe, Etsy or PayPal need to be able to prove to authorities that you are who you say you are just in case you go ahead and defraud customers. But I'm sure none of you are gonna defraud customers, of course. <laughs> But Etsy unfortunately don't know that, so they have to get your identification regardless. So once you've gone ahead and submitted a photo of some form of ID, you'll then just need to verify your email. And once you've gone into your email account and clicked that little email verification button inside the message that they've sent you, Etsy will then ask you to do the final part of your account setup, which is to add in either a credit card or a debit card. 
That's because, of course, once we've used up our 40 free item listings, each additional item listing will cost 20 cents each, and so we're going to need either a credit card or a debit card to pay for it. So that is one reason why at the start of the video I said you need either a credit card or a debit card. But there is another reason, and it is this. See, when a customer comes and buys a t-shirt from you, Printify will see the sale and go, yep, we'll send this order over to Monster Digital for you automatically. But before we do, you'll need to pay us $9.21 plus $4 per shipping to us so that we can pay that money to Monster Digital, please. So you might be thinking, well, that's fine. Because hasn't the customer already paid me $22.95 plus shipping for it anyway on Etsy? I'll just get them to remove the money from that. But you see, here's the thing, you can't because it isn't Printify that collects the money the customer paid. Because we're opening up our store on Etsy, not Printify. It is Etsy that is collecting the money that the customer paid us, not Printify. And so Printify has received no money to remove the cost of production and shipping off of. And so we need to cover this up front. Now for me, I usually use a credit card to pay for the expenses, and it's really nice because credit cards give you rewards for spending money with them. So. I accumulate miles that I use to take business class and first class flights around the world with, when there isn't a global pandemic of course. Etsy takes about a week to process and send you your money, but credit cards give you four to five weeks to pay off your charges. So you can easily pay off these Printify expenses before you accrue any interest, and you get free credit card rewards. So I'm glad that Printify don't remove the cost of production from my customer's payment, because if they did, I wouldn't be able to use my credit cards instead to earn all of these travel rewards for effectively free. And so because you ultimately are profiting each time a customer is buying an item from you, I don't really consider this a traditional upfront expense, like say, paying for an item listing with no sales guarantee. Instead, I think of it more as a cash flow snag, which luckily having either a debit card with some extra cash on or a credit card like me solves. And once you've gone in and added either a credit card or a debit card, that's it, your store is live. You can immediately go in and start selling t-shirts. You don't even need to add in a profile picture or anything, but of course, <laughs> it's still a good idea to go in and fill out your store profile because customers are much, much more likely to buy from a store with a profile that's filled out. So for example, I strongly, strongly recommend that you add in a store profile picture if you have a logo for your t-shirt business, this is a great place to upload it. If you don't though, that's okay, because like me, you can just find a free photo online to use for it. I found this for free on Pixels, and I just uploaded that. Something else I strongly recommend that you upload is a photo of yourself. On Etsy, people prefer a more personable experience. They like knowing the person behind the shop and prefer buying from small personal indie brands. And so presenting yourself in a more down-to-earth way rather than trying to pretend that you're some big t-shirt brand will actually help your sales on Etsy rather than hurt them. And when you can, I highly recommend uploading a store banner. A simple banner that features photos of your t-shirts works really well, and many big Etsy stores have simple banners like this. Later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how you can get cool photos of your t-shirts like this without having to actually buy them from Monster Digital and do a photo shoot yourself. But yes, while all of these optional profile modifications are great and genuinely help your sales, marketing, and conversions. And I highly, highly recommend doing them and I highly, highly recommend going and watching YouTube videos that are all about creating an optimized Etsy store profile. There is one thing in it that it is not optional for us to do. And that is that inside of our shop manager and the settings, we need to disclose that we are working with a print shop or factory to print our t-shirts for us. We need to tell Etsy the name of the company that we're working with, but we can hide that information from the public. So rather than put Printify down, we're gonna put the name of the printing factory that we're using through Printify, which is Monster Digital. Publicly, the only information we have to disclose is that we're working with a t-shirt printer to make and ship the t-shirts. And we need to give the location, which in this case here, is Miami, Florida. And don't worry about this impacting sales. Etsy customers do not mind print on demand stores. They won't be turned off the fact that you have a t-shirt printer that is making the t-shirts for you. You also have to disclose to Etsy why you're working with Monster Digital, what your role is in the t-shirt design process, and you'll need to disclose how much the production process Monster Digital handles. So for us, we're working with Monster Digital because we obviously don't have a t-shirt factory to make and ship the t-shirts ourselves. And if you've been following along with this tutorial, you can select that you're the only designer, although if you're working with another designer to help you come up with your t-shirts, just select that option instead. And when Etsy asks how much the production process wants to digital handles, <laughs> select that they handle everything, since, well, they are actually handling everything for us. 
But yes, as I said, while this is the one absolutely necessary thing that we have to do, I still recommend going and watching YouTube videos about setting up a beautiful, optimized Etsy store profile. And once you've done that, you'll be ready to move on to step four, listing our t-shirts for sale. And luckily it's super simple because of the Printify and Etsy integration that both companies have set up. Make sure you're logged into both Printify and Etsy in separate tabs, and then come to your products inside of Printify that you created and click Not Connected, and then click Etsy. Confirm that you allow the two to be connected, and that's it. Now you'll be able to publish all of your products, including your t-shirts that you've made in Printify on Etsy. And to do that, you just need to go back into your products inside of Printify, and there will magically be a new button next to them, Publish. <laughs> just click that and Printify will publish the product you selected straight to Etsy. It may take a minute for it to load up, but just be patient. Because once it's done, that's it, your product is live. Remember how we had to upload a picture, add in a title and do all that stuff when setting up a product manually on Etsy? You don't have to do any of that because Printify just does it for you. All parts of your product listing we added are brought over to Etsy, including the product colors, product sizes, price, the mock-up photos that Printify automatically creates. But best of all, Printify is now tracking the sales. And so whenever a customer comes and buys a t-shirt from you, Printify will see the sale and go, yep, we'll let Monster Digital know to make and ship out that t-shirt. And so Monster Digital's printing shop will then do that. They'll print your design onto a t-shirt, package the t-shirt up, and then ship it out to the customer, all completely hands off. Printify will then send the customer tracking code so that the customer knows the item has shipped and can track it. So then, now that you've set up your t-shirts with Printify, you can then go and delete that filler t-shirt that we created earlier. And then you can move on to step five, marketing and selling your t-shirts. So here's the deal, right? Here's how most people use Etsy to find items. Let's say that someone has a friend that has a golden retriever and they wanna get them a golden retriever themed t-shirt as a gift. The way that most people would do that is they'd come to the search bar and type in golden retriever t-shirt gift or something descriptive like that into the search bar. And when they do that, Etsy will search through all the t-shirts that have been uploaded to the website that it believes are related to that search phrase and show them. And so if you wanna market your t-shirts, learning how to tweak your t-shirt listings so that they'll show up for related search results is the best way to get sales. This is called SEO, otherwise known as search engine optimization. There are lots of tweaks you can make to your t-shirt listings so that they will show up higher in the search results. In fact, there are so many tweaks that you can make to give yourself a big edge over the competition that there are lots of dedicated YouTube video tutorials to this one specific topic. And so rather than just repeat what these videos say, I highly recommend that you instead go and watch them for yourself and support those creators. But to get your Etsy SEO learning train started, I'll tell you about some of the tweaks I made to this listing to make it more Etsy SEO friendly. The one tweak I made was I used lots of keywords in my title. Keyword based titles like this actually do really well in Etsy, so don't be afraid to use lots of relevant keywords in your title. And one way I came up with some keyword ideas was with this tool here, the Etsy Keyword Dominator tool. This usually costs money, but as this is a free tutorial video, you can get two keyword searches a day, so it's great to take advantage of. And something else I did, which is really important that a lot of people massively neglect, is I went in and I added lifestyle mock-up photos to my listing. Now, you might not think that this would improve your SEO, but it does. And that's because people are far more likely to click on a product listing that has a good photo, and they're far more likely to buy that product too. So if your listing has positive stats like this, Etsy will push it higher and higher in the search results. And luckily, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't need to buy my t-shirts from Printify and Monster Digital and do a photo shoot. And that's because of this app here, Placeit. With the Placeit account, you can upload your t-shirt designs onto the website and Placeit will digitally put it onto the library of thousands of t-shirt lifestyle photos that you can use to advertise with. Now normally, Placeit costs $15 a month and it's awesome and I highly recommend it, but they actually have some free photos that you can use to get started. And it was with those free photos that I used to create that store banner that I showed you earlier. I'll have a link to place it in the video description. As I said, it's super simple. You just select from one of their free t-shirt photos, pick which color you want the t-shirt to be, and then upload your design and place it where you want it to be on the t-shirt. Place it will then generate your lifestyle photo that you can use to market your t-shirts and drastically increase your conversions and click-through rates. And thus get more and more sales and more and more money into your pocket with your brand new t-shirt business. So yes, it turns out there were some clever uses of tools and apps anyone can go out there and start an online hustle with a t-shirt business for free. 
So, did my video help you? If it did, please hit subscribe and click that little notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos. And if you'd like to learn more about my t-shirt business, you should be sure to watch my video, five income sources that I built in my 20s that makes me over $1,000 a day. So go ahead, watch my next video, and I'll see you over there.